Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rebecca, I'm 44 years old and I used to suffer from multiple sclerosis but I no longer experience any of the symptoms since I started the carnivore diet a year and a half ago. In my previous video I said that I would do my next video on the topic of the menopause and the carnivore diet but actually I was so touched by the response to that last video that I really felt the need instead to do a follow-up video about that because it was a bit of a risk posted in that video. I, w I was not in a great mood and I made myself vulnerable. I, I exposed my vulnerability. And you know, when you do that on the internet, there's obviously a risk that you're gonna get trolls or just you know negative comments that would potentially make you feel worse. So it was a risk, but, but you guys responded so positively, so kindly so with such understanding and empathy and in fact many of you said that you you felt exactly the same as me about the state of the world i didn't want that video to be a poor me video i wanted it to be a, a reflection on the state of the world and and many people related to that and, and understood where i was coming from and i really am so touched and the comments are there for everybody to read and to for all of us to feel less alone so it was it was an amazing experience and 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 i and i'm so grateful and i wanted to start by by thanking you all for that and just appreciating that this has become something of a community for for people fighting the good fight and I, I really feel like I've truly made friends and connections th through through my YouTube channel and it, yeah I, 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 I'm just it was amazing and it really did help me feel stronger and happier so yeah thanks thank you but I also wanted to share the good news that I have turned a corner in my depressive episode and this it was a depressive episode that went on a bit too long for my liking I didn't I didn't think I didn't think it was necessary because life isn't bad you know my, my carnivore life isn't bad compared to my multiple sclerosis life I have my health back and that gives me so many more options and I can I can choose I can choose to be happy so you know, it was just a, a depression that just wasn't shifting. And I have to be honest with myself and with you guys about, sorry, that was my friend calling, um, a fellow carnivore actually, who lives in Galicia. And, uh, and anyway, he'll, he's relevant actually to, to what I'm going to say. So what was, I think, I think what I was saying was that I have to be honest about why this depression wasn't shifting. And there's something I haven't been talking about on my channel. Uh, well, I did talk about it back in, I think, April or May, but I haven't talked about it since. And that's partly because YouTube censors the topic and it's partly because I wasn't, I was a bit ashamed of myself. So the thing is, when I, uh, and I, I'm going to have to use a code word because YouTube restricts visibility and ad revenue when I talk about this topic. So I'm going to be talking about the plant that I used to smoke medicinally to help my multiple sclerosis symptoms, which since starting carnivore, I no longer needed, so I gave it up. And what happened was I went back to it. I didn't go back to smoking it. And that to me is half the battle because that's the thing I find most addictive and, um, and it, that, just a habit, you know, I think anybody who smokes will understand that. What I did do was allow myself to consume it as an edible and the reason I did that was because I realized my diet is fat based and in order to for an ed edibles to work you need fat to digest them and I thought well I can just sprinkle it on my ribeyes in that case and my eggs and and I did and it worked and it was just an experiment it was just to see if if it worked and it did and and it was then going to just be you know every weekend you know because it I thought you know it's more easy to control if if it's not if I'm not smoking it because that's that's partly what the addiction is for me. And what and it was like that at the beginning, it was just every now and again. But then what happened was I found that I started to feel a bit more depressed again. And then I would use it in the evenings to make myself feel better. And then I'd wake up feeling more depressed. So it's the typical situation where it becomes a vicious cycle where you know, you're know you trying to solve your problems using something that just makes your problems worse. And telling myself all these lies that addicts tell themselves if I, consume it in a different way it's a different thing and what have you and it isn't for me there's an addiction and that might have come around for legitimate reasons 
but it's something that I don't want in my life anymore. And so I, I think that that is why I couldn't shift this depressive episode. Even though I'm carnivore, even though I'm living in the middle of nature, even though, you know, there's so much I can focus on to be happy about rather than thinking about the past and all these painful things. But yeah, I got stuck in a bit of a vicious cycle and I'm pretty sure, I think that's what was dragging me down. My best friend was saying to me, you know, maybe consider <laughs> that this is this is why and I couldn't I couldn't deny it I couldn't deny it so the good news is since my last video I've been feeling a lot more strong and I've actually gone to Narcotics Anonymous <laughs> that's come about because my friend the one who just rang me the carnivore who lives in Galicia is a facilitator for Narcotics Anonymous and he's been gently encouraging me to because I admitted to him this is what I was doing and he was gently encouraging me to maybe come along to one of the one of the meetings and although i don't consider my biggest problems in life to come from this substance what i do think is that it's not a helpful solution to my problems and it's one i keep turning to and i was so proud of myself for giving up for 30 days and then it was soon after that that i tried it as an edible and before i knew it it was becoming a daily habit again and and I have to, as a, as a carnivore, as somebody on a health journey, I have to, I have to really be careful about so many different aspects of my life because it's not just physical health, it's mental health. And, you know, I have a lot of PTSD from, from, my, from my past and I don't think I can get past that if, 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 I'm, if I'm consuming this plant. And I also thought, you know, there's more reasons to go than just to kick that habit. It's, it's also a way of meeting people Spanish people, local people who are fighting the good fight, who are who are opening up and being vulnerable and showing their real selves, their deepest selves, and, and that really appealed to me. And I and I just thought I'd want to go just to sit and be in that room and listen to people's stories. So I went. I went last Friday. Today is Friday. I was gonna go tonight. I'm a week clean and I was gonna go tonight. I've got my little key ring. Oh, I don't have it on me actually, but I ha they, you have a key ring when you first start and it's a, a white color key ring, key ring. And when you make it to 30 days, it, you get the yellow key ring. And so I'm gonna get my yellow key ring and, and I'll keep going to the meetings because I, I, it really moved me. It really was wonderful to go. And I actually went having consumed before the meeting, which was a bit crazy. But then I thought, well, you know, if I don't have a problem, there's no point being here. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the thing I told myself. But that, that night I, I didn't, I didn't have any, and I, I haven't had it for the whole week. And I, and I do feel a bit better. I feel clearer headed, a bit more balanced emotionally. And I also, I also just feel better for having posted that last video that I did. So, so these are the things that I'm doing to turn the corner and get myself back on track because I want to represent the carnivore community. And that means I need to be in full health and full happiness and strength and there's no reason why I can't there's no reason why I can't and knowing that so many of you out there feel this way about the rest of the world and the state of the world is is really really reassuring because part of the way the world is it's, it makes you feel alone you know with social media and the pandemic was so divisive and and so many relationships fell apart because because people were on opposite sides of the debate and all of that and it seems to me that this is a time of great loneliness and so the, really, the, the, the comments that came in on my last video just addressed that feeling of loneliness and made me realise I'm, I'm not alone in being alone. And, and actually, I'm really not alone. You know, I have my friend, my, my dear friend, the carniv my carnival friend, and I have other friends in Galicia. And I have friends on the other end of the phone. And I have my animals. So, so yeah, I, I just wanted to give the good news and, and thank you guys and that you helped me to, to turn that corner and to take some serious steps towards fixing what still needs to be fixed. A healing journey is an ongoing thing. So, but the, the next problem I have is that if I give up that plant, I also need to give up this plant, the tea leaf, <laughs> because I, I drink way too much caffeine. So that, that's the next challenge that I face. I'd like to kick the habit entirely of, of that plant. And then I'd like to, I need to start reducing this plant because they kind of work together for me. Um, the, 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 like, they're like uppers and downers, <laughs> which is a terrible way to live, to, to, to be relying on 
one substance to relax you and then another to give you give you energy and then you're just full of all these substances and there's no good and you know as carnivores we're very conscious about what we put in our bodies and and yeah so I'm I'm very well aware that I need to now cut down on caffeine which is actually much much harder for me to do I'm I would say that my body's fully dependent on caffeine I've tried to give it up twice and it's not gone well <laughs> but I, I I am committed now to alongside kicking the one habit to stop me from going back to it because the reason I was going back to it is that I can't sleep because I if I drink a cup of tea too late at night I can't sleep and then if I'm not consuming that other substance there's nothing to help me fall asleep so I just need to regulate my my body and somehow relax it more so yeah I think caffeine is a terrible drug I think I'd be a much better person if I'd never touched it in the first place ever and and yeah I just I don't like the feeling of being wired all the time it doesn't feel like natural real energy yeah so so well there's another thing I wanted to just briefly mention which is that something I've learned about myself since going carnivore and moving out of my illness and back into the world is that I've realized that I've got a problem with boundaries and I think that's because I'm a people pleaser and also because I was left quite vulnerable by getting ill and being very isolated for many years. And the situation that I'm in right now is that I, I, I'm inviting people into my home off the internet because I need their help, the workaway scheme. And that can go really well. I've had some really nice workaways, but it can also go really badly and it's a risk. And it's my boundaries, even though I have been getting better at asserting them, I've realized that people will still try to trample them. It seems to be a recurring theme that I keep having to assert my boundaries. And that even when I do, people are still pushing back against them. And that might be because they want me to lend them money, which I'm not willing to do because I'm living off my savings at the moment and I'm still trying to get my career back up and running. And, and so I, I'm really, you know, not every bit of money I've got is gonna go into Mushroom Manor and, and the renovations here and the animals. I'm not asking you guys for money. I'm not, this is not a sub story. I'm just saying what's going on. So money is one area where I've had to seriously assert some boundaries. And, and then also I was in a, in a financially abusive relationship. So I, that left me feeling like absolute crap about myself and about how much I allowed that to, to go on, how long I allowed that to go on. So that's one area. And the other area is you know, I'm a, I'm a single woman living alone and, and you know, the, the help, usually I go for male workaways because I need physical labour and people who are skilled in like the construction industry and things like that, which are, there are fewer females. I do know women who are ex extremely capable in that area, but, you know, 90% on workaway that fit that description are men. And... It's happening time and time again that I'm inviting people into my home and, and then they make you feel really uncomfortable in your own home, even even when you say, look, this is not happening, I'm not interested. And I literally had one guy say to me, I'm going to trick you into bed. <laughs> and I had to kick him out. <laughs> I'm not revealing any identities here. You know, some people have appeared on my channel that have been my workaways and some people haven't. So I'm not, I'm not revealing any identities. But yeah, that has happened. Um, this this guy I said <laughs> I don't I mean there's no point going into the deep ins and outs of it but it was it was a really really uncomfortable situation and I and I had to get him kick I had to kick him out that and that left me feeling awful like not for kicking him out I felt great for kicking him out and and this is what I'm learning is that when I actually truly assert my boundaries and I really mean it and I don't care if I hurt their feelings because you are hurting me then I start to feel stronger and and I wouldn't I wouldn't act like that to people who were respecting me, obviously, but as a people pleaser, it still goes against my my basic instincts to to be rude to people. But this guy, I needed to, I needed to. He just wasn't taking no for an answer and it wasn't okay. I mean, I literally told him I need safe platonic relationships in my own home. And he started going on about BDSM and tricking me into bed. And are you sure you're not interested? And you're giving me mixed signals, he said at one point, and I just, I just, no, just no. Anyway, so I feel stronger because I have recently asserted my boundaries and learnt about myself that that's what I must do because I am still in a vulnerable position, even though I'm carnivore. And I think many women out there will have experienced this. It's 
happens all the time, but it doesn't usually happen in your own home with strangers off the internet. So that's just the particular situation that I'm in. It's okay, I have Filippo here who is totally cool. Like he would never try and get money off me or try and get me into bed. It just isn't like that. And so I do, you know, I'm not completely alone. He's here and he's actually gonna stay here, we think through the winter, through the winter months. And that's really nice because he can look after my animals if I want to go away somewhere and I can look after his cat if he goes away anywhere. So we're, we're both happy with the situation. Uh, so yeah, I, th I just wanted to get all that out and I, I'm, I'm really feeling so much better, much stronger. I am struggling with lack of sleep because I'm only one week into giving up that substance and that's why I have really bad bags under my eyes. <laughs> that may be visible on camera. But I didn't want to postpone filming this video because I, I really wanted to thank you guys. And and also regarding as I, the, the troubles in Asturias that I talked about in my last video, you know, if I hadn't had those troubles, I wouldn't have moved to Galicia. And Galicia is a real gem. It's, it's a wonderful place to live. It, but sometimes the conditions can be hard at Mushroom Manor. There's no, there's no denying it. And I'm at the very beginning of this huge project, which which is going to last me for the rest of my life, basically. But it's just it's a it's a really welcoming area. The community that's the main thing. The community is so much nicer. I mean, Asturias was hands down one of the most beautiful. It was the most beautiful place I've ever lived, but it was also the worst community I've ever lived in. <laughs> so coming to Galicia and feeling a completely different atmosphere has been such a balm to my soul, and. I feel welcome here and I feel comfortable here, even as a British expat, which, you know, Spanish people don't tend to like British expats with very good reason. And I don't, I don't feel that judgment when I walk in shops or cafes or whatever. Everybody I've met here in the local community has just treated me with, with respect and kindness, which is, which, is, which is lovely. And I'm actually going to A Coruña tomorrow, which is a city in Galicia. I think it's the biggest city in Galicia, to, to meet up with some friends, some Spanish friends. So that's really cool. I'm looking forward to that very much. In terms of my mental health, I just have to keep reminding myself that I am not disabled anymore. I'm not disabled anymore. It's... <laughs> what is there to be sad about when that is the truth of my situation? I was able to take my multiple sclerosis and chuck it away out of my life. And that's a miracle. It keeps on giving and it's wrong to feel depressed when that is what's happened in your life. It's not even in my mind. Multiple sclerosis just isn't in my mind. It doesn't come to bear on my daily life. I wake up in the morning and I'm simply a normal 44 year old. I don't need any special consideration. I don't have any energy restrictions. No aches, no pains, no nausea. My memory's back. My brain is back. And I, and I have a mission. I have a mission which is to spread the word about this diet and to try and help other people who are struggling with what I used to struggle with, see if it works for them. And that gives me a purpose. So I have community and purpose and my health. And, and you guys are, huge, are a huge part of that. You really, really are. I have a lot of emails to catch up on from you guys. So I, I promise I will, I've just been very tired because I've, I've having, been having sleepless nights just because of the whole giving up the substance. <laughs> So yeah, the, these these friendships that I've made online are just they don't feel like virtual friendships. They feel like real friendships. They are real friendships. They're real connections, and I couldn't be more honoured to be in contact with you guys. And yeah, so if you've emailed me and I haven't emailed you back yet, I will. I haven't forgotten. I'm just sometimes struggling to keep on top of all the stuff that's going on at the moment. Anyway, that's it. Yep. I just wanted to talk about all the positive changes that are going on in my carnivore journey and wish you guys the very, very best and thank you again for your absolutely incredible response to my previous video. I'm, I'm just so, so happy that this little community has grown and I, and I love you all and I wish you all the very, very best. So take care and I'll talk to you again in the next video. Bye.